guys! This is Amy from Amy Kristen Photography and I am here again making another video. What I want to talk to you guys about today is focus. I get a lot of questions about focus. Um, my camera is not focusing right, I'm having problems focusing, um, what should I do, this lens doesn't work, that kind of thing. Uh, before we begin, I want to let you know that, again, Lionel the cat may show up in the video, but he didn't show up in the last one, so I might be lying. Second of all, my dishwasher is going, and um, I just want to let you know that in case you hear a weird noise in the background that way. Okay, so anyway, if you're having problems focusing, first of all, it's really frustrating. Um, I've had them too in the past, and I've had to fix them. And usually if you're having focus problems, there are four main things that are probably the cause, or one of them is the cause. Um, so I'm going to talk about those things. The first thing is your shutter speed. Um, your shutter speed on your camera should be high enough so you don't get blur. If your shutter speed is too low, all the other settings could be fine and your actual exposure could be on, but your focus could be really off because you're actually getting blur. Um, you know, they say that the rule is that your shutter speed should be one over your focal length. So if your focal length is 100 millimeters, you should be at at least one one hundredth. Um, also, if you have a crop body, you should multiply that uh, shutter speed times whatever the crop factor is of your camera. So if you have a Canon camera, you should multiply it by 1.6 and a Nikon 1.5. So that means that actually with a 100 millimeter lens on Canon, you should be at least 1 1 60th of a second. Um, all of this is really a rough guide um, because obviously with a 24 to 70 lens, not that many people can handhold a camera at say 1 20th or 1 30th of a second um, at 24 millimeters. Some people can. Um, I actually can handhold pretty low, but not all lenses. Um, Really, the lowest you should try to go is 1 60th of a second, um, in general. And the other thing is that you will get to know whether you're a shaky person or not, um, because sometimes shaky people have more problems and they can't handhold sometimes maybe under 1 1 60th or 1 200th of a second, um, because if they do, they'll start getting blur. Um, so make sure that your shutter speed is enough to actually stop motion um, if you're focusing on something moving and the other thing is make sure that your shutter speed is enough to counteract any shake that you might have. If it's a situation um, where something is warranted you may want to either use a tripod or a monopod. Um, if you have a heavy lens or if you know that you're super shaky and you're taking an important portrait or something like that, um, that's an option. Um, the one thing to point out is that if you are using a tripod and you have a lens with IS or VC or whatever they call it with different brands, turn that off because the tripod will actually kind of counteract that and you can get blur. Okay, so the second thing that could be causing your focus problems is your aperture. My last video I actually talked about depth of field and um, I'm going to post a link, maybe down here, or maybe just in this blog post that you can refer back to. Um, so you actually need a specific aperture to get the depth of field that you need for a specific shot. So if you're taking a picture of um, Uncle Jim Bob and Aunt Mary Sue Bob, and Uncle Jim Bob is standing way in front of Aunt Mary Sue Bob because maybe they don't like each other anymore, I don't know. If you shoot with a really wide aperture, Uncle Jim Bob in the front is going to be in focus. But most likely, depending on the rest of your settings, Aunt Mary Sue Bob is going to be pretty blurry. The reason for that is because you don't have enough depth of field. This is an issue when you're shooting groups. You want to make sure that your aperture is wide enough um, to get a depth of field that you want. It's actually not that your whole photo is blurry, you're not shaking, it's not a lens issue, it's not you know a shake issue, anything like that. It's just that your aperture needs to be changed so you can get enough depth of field. Or um, you can do some of the other things I talked about in the depth of field video last time. You could back up, you could change your focal length, but really the probably most likely what you're going to need to do is stop down your lens um, so you can show that Uncle Jim Bob and Aunt Mary Sue Bob really do love each other and get them both in focus. 
Um, okay, so the third thing um, that can cause focus issues, and I actually come across this a lot, and I'm kind of surprised by it, but is your focus points. So I'm going to get out my camera, um, and you're not going to really be able to see the focus points or anything on here, but all cameras have the ability to actually pick your focus point and toggle your focus point, which means move them around. Um, you can move them around with one of the buttons on the back of your camera. I have lots of buttons back here. Depending what brand you shoot and even what model camera you have, it's going to be a little bit different. But a lot of the times, one of the problems that people have is that they're letting the camera pick the focus point for them. That is not good. If you let the camera pick the focus point for you, it could pick where you want to focus, or it could pick something in front of it, or it could pick something in back of it, or something like that. Um, cameras have autofocus systems, meaning you don't have to manually focus the lens with the focus ring. You can if you want to, but honestly, autofocus systems and cameras right now are really, really good. Um, a lot of cameras have a lot of focus points, this body right here um, actually has 61, and the one that I'm shooting my video on has 65. So I figure if I bought these cameras that have these awesome focus systems and all these focus points, why not use them? Why am I going to manually focus the lens when the camera can do it for me? I shoot in manual, um, you know, I choose everything else, but these autofocus systems are part of why cameras are so good today. Um, I'm not saying that they can't make mistakes and you have to understand how to use them, but autofocus is good. However, autofocus doesn't necessarily mean that you're letting the camera automatically pick your focus point. That is a choice, but it's not really the best one. Even if your camera has only maybe 9 or 11 focus points, because I've shot bodies like that before too, you can still get awesome results. Um, the thing is, is that a lot of people don't actually realize that they're letting the camera choose their focus point. Um, so let me step back. When I shoot pictures, um, I usually shoot portraits. I shoot other things too, but my primarily, I primarily shoot portraits. When I shoot a portrait, I'm using one single focus point. And I'm also in single shot mode, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, you can choose one focus point, and you can actually toggle around and choose the focus point that you want and put it where you want and shoot your photo. The problem is, is that you also can have the camera choosing your focus point and the camera is still only choosing one point. It's just choosing one point and you don't know what point it's going to choose. Um, I've talked to people who actually don't realize that the camera is choosing their point but they can't figure out why the point that they want in focus is not the one that's lighting up. It's because the camera is actually choosing your point. So my advice to you is if you're not sure if you're letting the camera choose your focus point, kind of go through your manual and see how to change the modes and see what mode you're in um, and then figure out how to go from there to make sure that you're choosing your focus point. Um, one other thing I want to talk about with choosing your focus point is that a lot of people, I don't want to say a lot of people, but some people um, when they have their cameras they only use the center fo focus point and then focus and recompose. I'm not a huge fan of focusing and recomposing. Um, I'm not saying that you can't do it or that you shouldn't do it because some people apparently are pretty good at it. Um, I think for me, I just have gotten used to toggling focus points. Um, there are some cameras where the outer focus points are actually not as sensitive as the one right in the middle. So it's legitimate why they would want to do that. But one thing to know when you're using only the center focus point or really using any focus point and then focus and recomposing is that that can cause problems. Um, and that can cause problems especially when you're shooting at wide apertures. Um, this kind of goes back to my first point. If you're shooting a photo and it's at like f1.8 and you point your camera up. Oh, I better take off my lens cap again. If I'm taking a picture of you and I use my center focus point and um, let's pretend I'm using shutter button focus. So I choose my center focus point, half press the shutter button to focus on what I want to, then I recompose the shot. Here's the thing. Your depth of field is really thin at wide apertures. And if you have the camera pointed this way, and then you swing it this way to recompose, 
you're actually moving your focal plane. Depending on how deep that focal plane is, you can actually be moving it off of what you focused on. So that's why focus and recompose can be a problem. Um, again, I'm not saying that you can't do it. Um, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it. I'm just letting you know what the problems may be with it. Put my focus, my lens cap back on.